Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Chris. I have another simulation for you guys. It's the Miami Hurricanes and the Tennessee Volunteers for the 2020 season. Real rosters. It's a way to look at both of these teams, even though they're not on the schedule. In fact, they haven't played one another since 2003. And I thought this would be an interesting matchup. Again, only showing the first quarter of action just to give you guys a sneak peek. And if you like these videos, if you like this matchup, go ahead and hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. It definitely helps out the channel a ton. So the reason why I want to do these two programs, I find them both very interesting in the sense that a lot of strong fans on both sides, they've had success in the past, both have struggled in recent years and hoping that things are better in 2020. My Hurricanes went six and seven last year, lost their last three games. However, they do have some momentum in the offseason with all of their transfers. Quarterback De'Ara King, the most notable. Quincy Roche, defensive end, who was defensive player of the year in his conference at Temple. Those two guys stand out against some key returners. So there is some optimism at Miami. And then you're looking at Tennessee right here. With their quarterback situation, and Jarrett Huertano played last year, put up some solid numbers. And they'll look to build on that as well. And Tennessee, conversely, won its last six games last year, finished 8-5. and five. Some close wins in there, but they feel optimistic about the 2020 season as well. Again, with some key returners and some momentum. And again, both teams are just hoping for some positivity for the upcoming season after struggling for a number of years. And the thing that stands out to me about Tennessee, in addition, you see the offensive line here. They have a number of key guys back. Running backs have been solid. They have to replace some wide receivers, but again, talented guys stepping in. And as far as their defense goes, they return their, pretty much their entire defensive line. Again, key linebackers, most of their secondary. So that's why Tennessee fans are excited. And I touched on Miami. So here we go. Oh, a fumble right out of bounds. It's a nice tackle there. Nice hit by Gervin Hall. Safety. Very curious to see how he does this year. It's one of those guys at Miami that earned that, you know, earned a starting role last year. And there's a lot you work through when, as a first year starter. Even though you're on the field and you show flashes. You know, that second year, you can really take a jump. And I think a lot of people are excited to see what Garvin Hall can do in his second year as a starter, expected starter. That's a nice little pass over the middle, right in the center of Miami's defense there. Garvin Hall, number 26, again on the tackle. The thing about Garvin, though, he will have some competition with Amari Carter back for his senior year. And Bubba Bolden looking to be... Looking to have a, a large role as well, coming back from injury. But Gervin played the most out of the three. You would just like to see a little bit more playmaking ability from that safety spot. It's a nice little freeze frame, 360 degree angle here. So I'm curious to see how Gervin does. Territory now. Here's first and ten at the 42 yard line. And I've touched on the, the safeties, the other safeties as well. We talk a lot about Bubba Bolden, expecting him to be solid. There's Amari Carter right there. I think Amari Carter's an interesting one as well. He's played a lot. You're just looking for that, you know, maybe they slide him down, maybe into that striker role, or maybe they just keep him in that rotation at just a pure safety. Nice pass rush there. Miami has options at striker. It's a position we don't talk about a ton. Here's a look at the defensive line for Miami. Again, should be a really strong unit. Over the striker position, Romeo Finley has taken that over the last couple years, and he moves on. So the guy to step in is Gilbert Frierson. And you've seen Gilbert play in spots 
he has earned playing time there last year but particularly you know if, if he's unable to perform at a high level maybe you look at a guy like Amari and he comes up because again you have the options at safety he's a physical player and there's Amari right there number five in on that tackle but he's a guy that might be able to excel in that role Gilbert might be you know we haven't seen that we didn't see that in the spring the only, Miami only had four spring practices but it's just an option to maybe consider for Miami's defense it's a defense that returns a lot of guys but I think the key will be I, I do believe that finding that top 11 because they you know touch on safety they've got three guys or the defensive ends Man, Tennessee is on the move. You're seeing Tennessee's passing offense really excel on this opening drive. And shout out to Tennessee fans if you're here checking out your squad. Thank you for joining. I've been doing a number of these simulations. And all and as always, I always ask your guys' opinions. So drop in the comments. Let me know what matchup you want to see next. Miami's defense looking for a stop here. Tennessee put together a good drive. That's Ty Chandler, number eight. One of Tennessee's running backs coming back. He's in the passing game. Seen a couple times number five there. That's Josh Palmer. D'Angelo the Gibbs there, number six. So they've got some talented receivers. And Jones obviously transferred from USC, so that's big. So here we go, second and goal. Second and four. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. That's tough. Is that is he in? I think they called incomplete. Miami's defense had a little bit of a gap. But anyways, yeah, drop in the comments. Let me know what teams you want to see next. He's slinging it on this one. They don't have to be on Miami's schedule. And I think the thing is, here, third and goal here. Let's let's check this play out here. This guy's on the move. Just lofts a pass over 52. That's Patrick Joyner. That's Ty Chandler right there, number eight. They're calling a touchdown. Man, he got his feet in. That was a good pass. Nice touch. It looked like he got his feet in bounds. But the one thing when I started doing these simulations, it, you start to think about, and we had an article on InsideTheU.com about this, about maybe programs you'd like to see Miami face. Obviously, Miami does face Florida every now and again. That's a high-profile non-conference opponent. Another one, Miami's scheduled to play Alabama to start the 2021 season. So that's big time as well recently played LSU so but I think the thing is when you look at that article I was talking about and maybe looking at Miami's history like a Tennessee there's a number of top programs that Miami just has not played in a while Alabama is one of them I mentioned Tennessee 2003 but there, it seems like there's a you know Michigan Penn State those are other teams they have not faced in a long time you know, USC, again, I've been Georgia. You know, these are teams I've done the simulations for, and I think it's, I think one thing that you guys have enjoyed, not just seeing the 2020 Hurricanes in action, maybe possibly getting a look at what it might look like with Miami's new offense. Going to this spread, this fast tempo, this air raid attack, kind of just a combination of everything there. But I think you guys get a kick out of seeing these teams on the field together. So big drive by Tennessee there. 10 plays, 76 yards on the opening drive. Miami obviously will look to respond. One of the reasons why I just do a quarter, just to give you guys a sneak peek of it. I've done a full game before, but it's just a quick look. And certainly moving forward, I have some ideas with these simulations if you guys like them come up with something so yeah there's Tennessee look of an, a number of guys coming back 
and we'll see. And obviously, you know, there's optimism on both teams, but certainly there's there should be some hesitation with how things went last year. You know, I mentioned the Tennessee's winning streak, but obviously losing to Florida, Georgia, Alabama, the three better teams, the three best teams on their schedule last year and getting essentially blown out or definitely score got away from them type of games and if Tennessee's going to really take that jump they're going to need to cut into that and that's what they'll be looking to do but you can't discredit a winning streak especially for these programs looking to take that jump you're just hoping for that momentum I think if you're a Miami fan you remember what Miami did at the end of the 16th season winning the five games and then going ahead to win in the first 10 the following season so Tennessee would certainly like to have that kind of a run here we go, Miami. The Eric King. Here's a play fake. Is nice play fake. To his right. Give him a on nice the play screen, fake and scramble down. there by De Eric. And this whole line, it is the of the offense. Look at the offensive it's line. We talked about them a lot in the offseason. A lot of changes in the sense of you get the addition to Jared Williams. Will he play left tackle or right tackle? You get the transfer from Isaiah Walker from Florida. Will he be. Will he receive a waiver to be ready to go this season? No word on that. No announcement yet. But a talented prospect, if he gets that. That's a nice play there. I really like that play. You know, Derek makes a guy miss, but stays in the pocket. Could have certainly scrambled, but he stays in the pocket, fires a pass down to D. Wiggins. Another guy we've talked about quite often in the offseason. Recently had that VIP article on the site. Working out with the NFL receiver who's really been helping him with his game. You can check that out. But certainly with the offensive line, so those are two changes. Navon Donaldson makes some news and he announces he will redshirt this season. He's Miami's most experienced offensive lineman. So that becomes big news. So who will step in at his spot? Played left guard. I have John Campbell in here in this simulation. And if you guys have an opinion on the offensive line, certainly would love to hear it. Go ahead and drop in the comments. Let me know who you think should be the five offensive linemen. Go left to right on that so everybody understands what you're doing there. So here we go. Nice pass. First and 10. Miami goes shotgun. They go four wide. Splitting three out to the right. I'm really liking these fakes by Derek that we're seeing. Nice pass to Mike Harley. Let's look at Tennessee's 3-4 defense. Again, they return all of their defensive linemen pretty much. And some key linebackers. Guys are back. Such a key thing. And the secondary. So a lot of guys coming back on Tennessee's defense. They will certainly look to be making that improvement from a year ago. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up Here we go, another. Six. So Miami spreads it out. This time they go three receivers to the left. Second and six. Fake, and then he's still. Oh, that's intercepted. That's tough. So they goes fake, and then it looked like it tipped off of Wiggins' hands. McCullough right there to pick it off. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing Yeah, just a crowd. It looked like it went off sure Pope's hands, number six. But just a crowded side. group there. I don't know. They both. <laughs> that's kind of a funny play. They're both good friends. They both played at Southridge High School together, graduated the same year. So that's kind of interesting to see them kind of collide. So just a not enough space there on that formation, on those routes. And you know they spent all week in practice in meetings. Force it in there, but ball gets tipped. So let's advantage. see what Miami's defense has to do. Going up a score, that takes the crowd out of the game and puts them down. Some of these simulations, you get a full look at Miami's offense, and then sometimes it's defense. So looks like this one's going to be all about the defense. That's okay. We can talk about the defense more. Touched on the safeties. Very curious to see how they progress. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. But when this and there's, okay. The look at that. Okay, well... <laughs> We can still talk about the defense, but Zach McLeod with a nice interception. Playing that middle linebacker spot. 
Returns for his fifth season after redshirting last year. Certainly it kind of surprised everybody, but the big thing that stands out to me was Zach and deciding that. And one thing that he talked about with, with you just definitely, he definitely seems to have a sense of urgency for the season. Understands this is it. Understands he needs a big year for his future, playing sparing, not sparingly, but maybe in the shadows of the other linebackers. Playing through some injuries, not at full capacity, so slides over to middle linebacker, looking to take over the defense. Essentially, have a strong leadership role. So here we go. So Miami's got the ball in the 26. Okay, that's a nice that's a nice bounce back pass for Derek. A lot more space in the routes there. Pope makes a nice catch on the sideline. Speaking of Mark Pope, shout out to everybody who's been watching the Dynasty series. We have a huge game coming up, and Mark Pope has definitely been picking up his play. You guys definitely need to check out that series if you have not yet. Or all of the rest of these simulations. Including the Paradise Camp 1 and the Northwestern Miami Central High School game. You got to check that out as well. Okay, nice. That's tough. I like seeing Jalen Knight out there for passes. But unable to corral that one in. In this case, you want perfection, but way better than it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. That's a tough play there. You know, we've seen that kind of throughout this quarter where Derek is looking for you know to create more some, some more space, some more time there. They take a sack on first down, it was simply an incomplete pass. And just unable to come down on a blitz there. Just unable to get rid of the ball. You see Harley there. It looked like he was trying to set up, but third and seventeen. So this will be tough to convert. The Rams ball right, first down line, right there on the the end zone down. there. So incomplete pass. Pass intended for Wiggins, and who knows if Miami would have caught that? Obviously, I would have liked to have seen the, them go for it, but. With it being just a first quarter, I'm sure they would have kicked a field goal. That's a good pass break up there. By Taylor. That's tough. They, they both were certainly in on that ball. A little disappointing, not going to lie, but that's okay. we got to look at Borigalis here. Another one of Miami's key transfers. And I know a lot of you guys are excited about Borigalis, and you should be just because... I think that's the thing that you think about with Miami, kind of going back to their season from a year ago, the six and seven year, and the transfers that are stepping in. I think you're looking at that term that, that's used quite a bit in baseball with the, the above replacement. And I think that's the thing. You're going to see upgrades at the quarterback position with King, upgrade at kicker position with Borigalis there. And I think if you look at those two positions of just those two, I think a lot of Miami fans would think that would have impacted the record last year. You go six and seven, but better quarterback play, better kicking results, maybe things would have been a little bit different. And certainly other things need to tighten up. It's not like Miami's got, they're just perfect all the way across the board. But it just looks like those two positions, you make those upgrades, and that gives you hope. But Tennessee, I think the big thing that they're looking for, again, that winning streak, a number of key returners, you're hoping just for improved play. You're always hoping for the quarterback to take that next step after earning quality experience. You're just building on that and just hoping for even a bigger year. Yeah, so we'll see. Tennessee's not won the SEC since 98. Miami's never won the ACC. Both teams with plenty of success in the 90s. And it's been spotty since. 
So here we go. Looks like Miami's not going to come out ahead of this one. Maybe they would have came back and won. I'm sure Miami fans would have thought that, but maybe Tennessee feels like the offense was great. Either way, I'm glad you guys jumped in on this. This was good to see. I, again, I like both of these programs. It'll be interesting to see if they can build on some things they've done in the offseason. And who knows, maybe they'll face one, one another sometime soon. So thanks again for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Again, check out InsideTheU.com for all your coverage of the Miami Hurricanes. And you can follow me on Twitter at InsideTheU. Take care.